weighted mean project. We use weighted means in schools. Weighted means can be very useful in a number of different situations. We use them in a school to put different emphasis on marks from different assessment types. For example, this year assignments are worth 20%, quizzes are worth 30%, and tests are worth 50%. Those percentages are weights that we attach to the averages of the assessments that you complete in each area. So we add up all of your assignments, figure out what your marks are as an average percentage, and then we assign them a weight of 20%. There are other uses of weighted means as well. Weighted averages, or weighted means, are also useful for decision making when you want to evaluate multiple alternatives that have many features. It allows you to prioritize the features and come up with a more objective evaluation of competing alternatives. This method is also commonly used by organizations to evaluate contract bid proposals from different suppliers. Imagine if you're working in a government agency and you were to look, got a whole bunch of bids for contracts. Uh, maybe you got a hundred different bids to do some work for you. You want an objective way to evaluate all of those, and weighted means is one way of doing that. House selection is an example where I've personally used weighted means. So when my family was house hunting for a new house, it was difficult to determine whether one house was better than another because they're all so different. To help us evaluate the house, we identified what features we wanted in a new house and then gave weights to each of those features. That allowed us to score each of those features for each house and come up with a final score for the house. So in our example, the house features we were looking at were a quiet street, three bedrooms, a fourth bedroom or a den, a preferred school district, a large backyard, and it was actually quite an extensive list. There were a lot more features than that. So this process allowed us to determine which house was objectively the best based on the criteria we'd identified and the importance we'd attach to each of them. The importance of each criteria is defined by the weights that we attach to each criteria. So here's an example for our house shopping. The quiet street could be scored from 0 to 3. A score of 0 meant that it's actually a little a bit of a busy street, but a 3 is super quiet. And the importance of that was maybe point two. Three bedrooms, it was either a yes or a no. So it's a zero if it didn't have three bedrooms, and it's a one if it did. And that was very important, so we gave that a weight of point three. The fourth bedroom or den, again, it's either a does it have it or does it not, so it's yes or no, zero or one, it wasn't super important, so we attached a point one to that. The preferred school district, again, it's either yes or no, a zero or a one, and it's pretty important, so it got a point two. And the large backyard, well, there's differences in, you know, it can be a monster big backyard, so that gets a three. If it's just a moderate sized backyard, then it gets a one. And the importance of that got a weight of point two. If you added up all those weights, you'd have a total of one. So your assignment is to make a decision using the weighted means method. First, you need to choose a decision. Think about a decision you might need to make where you have at least three alternatives and each alternative has multiple features that need to be considered in the decision-making process. Some possibilities include which cell phone to purchase, which college or university acceptance to choose, or if you haven't got accepted, you could think about which programs to apply to in the future, which apartment to rent, which car to buy, which career to pursue, or which computer to buy. So how are you going to do this? You're making a spreadsheet using Excel or Google Sheets that uses weighted means to evaluate three alternatives. Each alternative must be evaluated on at least five different criteria. The next screen shows three different ways of implementing the spreadsheet. So this is the easiest to make and I'd recommend this as the starting point. It lays out all of the calculations in front of you all of the details so you can kind of work through them one at a time and you immediately see the results on screen. So if we look at the first line where it says quiet street, I scored that as two out of the maximum score of three. And then we divided in the third column where it says percentage, that's simply the score divided by the maximum score, which gives us 67%. Then the weight that we attach to it, that's the importance at 20%. The weighted score then, is the 20% times the 67% or 
0.2 times 67, which gives us 13%, and so on. We did that for each of the criteria, and at the bottom, you end up in the final score category, you get the weighted score for that house. And you can see that each house scored differently and ended up with a different score. So that's the simplest method. And like I said, I'd recommend that as kind of the starting point. If you build that, you can always make it cleaner and neater, more efficient later. So now this one, it's got essentially the same information, but it's been tightened up a bit. A lot more of the calculations are done in the background and they're not presented on screen because they're not necessarily meaningful to the person who's looking at it. And then the final version really tightens it down so it's the easiest to understand for somebody who's coming in from the outside and looking at it because it really just boils down to the key pieces of information. What was the maximum score, the weight that we attached to that, and how did each house score on each of those criteria. There are two major learning objectives for this assignment. First is to learn the fundamentals of using spreadsheets like Excel and Google Sheets. The second is to use weighted means in a practical way. If you're unfamiliar with spreadsheets, there's a quick tutorial for Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets in video form. So if you go to this link, it provides you with everything you need to know to do this assignment. It shows how to make uh, formulas, it shows how to enter information, how to do formatting, that kind of thing. The video is in our ProbVids playlist in Teams, or you can find it in the Probability playlist on YouTube. And there are lots of other how-to videos related to Excel and probably for Google Sheets as well on YouTube. So if you need additional information, you can always go out and look for an, another video to supplement your learning. So the assignment method, there's kind of a 10-step, or actually I think it's a 12-step process. Step one is to choose your decision. Decide what decision you're going to make, whether it's phone selection, car selection, school program, etc. Step two is to identify alternatives. Look for three alternatives you'll evaluate. If you're choosing phones, which three phones are you going to evaluate? Then step three is to identify your criteria. Identify at least five criteria that you'll evaluate your alternatives on. If you're choosing phones, then screen size, weight, etc. Those could be your criteria. Now learn how to use spreadsheets. Look at the example spreadsheets and make sure you understand what you're creating. Go through the spreadsheet tutorial video. And then note, the tutorial doesn't walk you through building your specific spreadsheet. It just shows you how to build spreadsheets, how to enter formulas, and so on. You still need to put in your own knowledge to create the spreadsheet to do what you want it to do. Step five is to create your spreadsheet. So go ahead, create a spreadsheet similar to the one in the example. Step six is to score your criteria. Determine a maximum score for each criterion. So a little more detail on step six. The maximum score depends on how many possible quality levels the criterion has. For example, in the spreadsheet that we talked about, a house has either at least three bedrooms or it doesn't. So the maximum score is one and the minimum score is zero and there's nothing in between. A house score is zero means it doesn't meet the criteria or a one means that it does. However, the quietness of the street, as I talked about previously, is more variable. A zero means that it has a fair bit of traffic, while a three might indicate that the street is a dead end with almost no traffic. A larger score always indicates better because we're trying to get the maximum score. Step seven, assign importance to the criteria. So determine a weight for each criterion. The weight reflects how much importance you put on that criterion. The total of all the weights should be 100% or one. Assign a score for each alternative for every criterion. So you're at step eight, you're scoring the alternatives. In step nine, you calculate the weighted score for each criteria. Create a formula to calculate the weighted score for each criterion, but don't do the calculations by hand. Use the power of the spreadsheet. That's really one of the key points that we're trying to learn in this lesson. Step 10, total up the scores. Total the weighted scores for all the criteria to get you the score for each alternative. Step 11, there are some questions that go along with the assignment, so answer those in a separate document. And step 12 is submit your assignment through Teams. So what you need to submit is your spreadsheet. If you're using Google Docs, after you've finished it, download your file as an Excel file and then upload it to Teams. Don't send me a link to your Google Sheet. 
We always run into problems with people not giving me proper permissions. So there's a lot of follow up. So download it as an Excel and then upload it. Second piece is a document that answers the two or actually I think there are three questions in the assignment. So again, if you use Google Docs to write your answers, you can download the document as a Word doc and then you can upload it when you upload your spreadsheet. And that's all that's involved in the Weighted Mean Project.